Hey card making friends, welcome back. It's Sandy McIver here and today we are going to do a detailed reverse blackout technique. We are going to do the reverse of what we did in this video last year where I made the messy watercolor blackout technique cards and we're going to flip it over and use the other side. We're playing with the Simon Hurley Twirling Tulips 3D embossing folder and this is what the card's going to look like. You want to start with white cardstock and a tip here, you want to use a spritzer on both sides of the cardstock, get it really good and wet before you put it inside the embossing folder, emboss it and then let it dry. This technique really only works on really deep 3D embossing and you'll find out why when we start to do the background. Okay, so just fair warning on all that. I've got three cut out here, so we're going to be making three or four cards. I'm using a bunch of Simon Says Stamps inks, and for the pinks, we're starting with Bubblegum, Sweets, and Taffy. And I am working on the back side of the embossing where the flowers are indented. I'm using blending brushes, and I'm adding my color, starting with the light and working my way through the medium to the dark on these flowers. Okay, and you can be as messy as you want because anything that gets onto the background is going to be covered by black in the end, so you won't see it. The one part that you want to be careful of is you don't want to get a whole bunch of green from the leaves into the pink of the flowers. That's kind of the only thing that you've got to be careful of. Obviously, I have this sped up, uh, but you just want to take your time and add as much color as you want. And the more color that you add, the more your flowers are going to pop when we do the final background technique. Okay, so I'm just carrying on getting all the colors in there. I'm switching over to green now, and this is Sprout and Limelicious, starting with the light color, and then I'll add my darker color for highlights. So you want to fill in, there's lots of leaves, there's lots of little stems and the bottom of the flowers. Again, this is a very forgiving technique, so just go with it and slap that color on there. <laughs> okay, and I'm only using two colors of ink. You could use three if you wanted to. Okay, I'm just about finished. Got one little more leaf to go. You want to make sure that you're not pressing too hard. You don't want to flatten out any of your embossing. Okay, and you don't want to press too hard with your fingers as well. Also make sure that your fingers are clean. Uh, when we get to the background technique, I actually transfer some black ink with my dirty finger and get it all over a pretty blue flower. Okay, so just adding some green. I'm going to flip to the next one. And this one we're going to use Violet and Heather for the purple flowers. And I'm gonna do a combination of two colors of flowers on this one, purples and pinks. So I'm starting with the light violet and then I'm coming back in and adding the darker Heather. And now I'm going to flip out back to the pinks. So bubblegum, sweets, and taffy and not only am I going to do the other tulips in these colors, when I get to the medium color of the pinks, I'm going to add that to the purple of my tulips. You see right now, it's kind of a blue purple, and by adding the pink, you turn it to a red purple, and it adds a lot more highlight, and when we do the background technique, those flowers really, really pop. So mix your colors up a little bit and saturate those tulips as much as you can because you're really going to see them pop when we finish doing the background. Okay, so again, coming back in and I'm done with those. I'm going to finish again with the greens, Sprout and Limelicious. And I find using the smaller blending brushes works a lot better. These are actually my mediums. My small ones are really small. And these are Simon Says brushes. And I believe Spellbinders has exactly the same size. I just don't have them in every color, so that's why I'm using these ones. Okay, so filling in your green, going for all your stems and leaves. And we're just about done with the light color. I'm only going to color a, two, a couple of these, but as in the other messy watercolor technique, build a whole bunch of backgrounds ahead of time because once you get into doing the final step, um, and adding the black to it, it's so exciting you won't want to stop. So you'll want to have a whole bunch of these ready to go. And you know, you can create some new colors of tulips. They're always doing it. 
and try different embossing folders. There's lots of 3D embossing folders. Now it's time to do the background. Okay, we're going to be using VersaFine Claire, the Nocturne, and you want to make sure that it's good and juicy, so have your re-inker ready. If you have a whole bunch of these cards done, you may need to re-ink. So this is a spongy uh, ink pad, and I find those work quite well. You're going to drag the ink pad over your flat embossed surface, and it's only going to stick to the background and anything that's raised within your flowers and leaves because everything else is indented. So that's why that you want to use a 3D embossing folder. That's also why you don't want to squish anything while you're adding the color. Okay. I re-inked my pad because I've already done four of these backgrounds. <laughs> it needed to be re-inked. And see, I can just turn it ever so slightly on its edge and I can fill in any of the white spots that aren't showing. So a juicy ink pad goes a long way with, for this technique. Otherwise, you're going to have a tendency to want to push really hard. Don't go sideways. You're going to get all the little lines like that. Make sure you're just going up and down. Um, but if your ink pad is not juicy, you're going to have a tendency to want to push on it. You do not want to do that because then it's, the black is going to get all over the leaves and the flowers. So re-inking is a very good idea. Okay, so we're done with that one. Look at the detail it pulls out. This is so exciting. It's just like magic. And it's a whole bunch more fun than trying to ink the back of your embossing folder four or five times to get the same result. Of course, you got to be brave too. Okay, rubbing it in there, turn it around the other way. I'm also obviously using a tissue um, because this ink transfers to your fingers quite easily. I've already transferred it once. Okay, and the third one, my slim line. Okay, clean part of the Kleenex. Ooh, look at that. Look at those tulips pop. And you may have noticed the tulips in this one are a different color. <laughs> I have to disclose that. When I was starting to do the black part, I needed to move all of the Simon's ink pads out of the way on my video table. And so I turned the camera off to do that and I forgot to turn it back on. I got all the way to the end of doing all this beautiful black stuff and realized I hadn't taped it. So I had to start again and re-ink uh, three more so that I could finish the video. Duh, can you tell it's Monday? All right, just getting in there, trying to get rid of any of these little white spots. Aren't these pretty? And they're so easy. You don't need to be good at coloring. You don't need to be a Copic colorer. Whoa, look at those. They are gorgeous. Here's a couple I did before. Those are the ones that you missed when I turned the video camera off. Now I have lots of cards. Okay, so I finished them off with a white background, cut them down to four by five and a quarter for those ones. And obviously this is a slim line. I'll give you the measurements over on my blog for that one. The sentiments are all die cut from handwritten sentiments etched dies, also part of Simon Hurley's Tulip Garden Collection. And I did those in black and gold. So the embossing folders from Spellbinders are five and a half by eight and a half, I think. So you'll notice that you can do a slim line, you can do a five by seven, and you can have a bunch of different spots to do that. You can also do an A2, four and a quarter by five and a half. So they're very, very versatile. 3D and they have a whole pile of them over on their website and a bunch of them are on sale right now. So go over and grab yourself a few and have fun with this technique. Everything I use today is linked underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog where you'll get uh, the cutting details for all of the cards. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to link to the previous one where I made these cards, the Messy Watercolor Blackout Technique, just in case you haven't seen it. And uh, if you are enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and consider sharing them with your friends. Until next time, happy stamping. Toodles.